This video is going to show you how to use the equation editor in Google Docs and also how to do some basic formatting, equation formatting in the word processor in Google Docs. So to begin with, for the equation editor, uh, I've got two examples up here. The one on the top is with the equation editor. The one on the bottom is just some word formatting. And I'm going to move the cursor where I want it. So I want the equation to happen here right after that arrow. I'm going to go to Insert, Equation. And when I do this for the first time, a new bar po pops up over here. And you can see i got a little X on the right, so I can get rid of it if I want to. But on this bar, I've got some Greek letters. I have some miscellaneous operations, relations, math operations. This is the most common set that we're going to use in this class. And then I've got some arrows that are going to help me. All right, uh, before I get into this, let me explain a little bit about this. This is going to be our most common menu here. And look at that top line. It's got a fraction, a square root, nth root, um, x to the b with the subscript a, x subscript a, and x superscript b. So it's got a couple different things that I'm going to use most often. That's most often in the forms that we're going to have. So let me show you a little bit about how the equation editor works. I'm going to switch to a different program so I can highlight something. So on the top, this is the top row of commands that I just showed you. The fraction, the, the square root, the nth root, everything else that's up there. When you select one of these, you actually create a, a special formatting option that puts these text boxes into place. So if I select the fraction, it'll have a text box on the top, a line, and a text box on the bottom. Now the text boxes that you create are actually invisible, so they're a little hard to maneuver around. But I can use the arrow keys and click with the mouse to figure it out. So in this case, I would type A, or whatever my number is. And then down below, I'd move the cursor down with the arrow key or click in it. In this case, I clicked. And type in the next one, let's say B. Or maybe I want this X, B over A. But I want to use a, a V, so I'll, when I click on it, it'll create these text spaces. Again, you won't be able to see them, you just kind of work with them. And then I use the arrow key to move my arrow uh, to move my cursor into the invisible text box. So I might choose a subscript zero. Use the arrow key to get up to the other text box and square it. So that's something we've seen before. So when you're selecting those options, all you're doing is kind of getting these invisible text boxes in place on the screen. Let's go back to the equation editor and see how to do this. All right. So I've got three pi squared. So I'm going to type in three. Now when I do this. It's kind of small, but I'll work with that in just a minute. And the pi squared. So there are a couple things going on here. First off, I want a Greek letter. So that's going to be pi. And the second thing I'm going to want is the format of something raised to the uh, power. So I'm going to choose my math operations. And I'm going to choose x squared, because that looks like what I'm after next. Then I'll choose the pi symbol. And I'm going to use the arrow on my keyboard to move the cursor over. And when I move it over, it actually moves up into the next text box type the letter 2. I'm going to move the cursor to the right again, and then I'll pull it out of the text box, and then I can type an equal sign. So that's great. Um, notice I had to think ahead. I've got pi squared. I remember there was a re math relationship that was x to the b. So that's what I pulled down so it looks nice and tight, the way you want an equation to look like. If you do it as an afterthought, you'll get some gaps in there that you may not want. Now, this is all kind of small, and it's not red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight everything. So I'm going to use my mouse to highlight it all. And then I'm going to go up to the text, and I'm going to make it 24 uh, point size. And the color, I'll change it to red to match what I have down here. There we go. Now I'm going to click on the cursor right to the right of the equal sign, which looks like it's outside of the invisible box, but that's OK. Now I need a format that looks like a fraction. I remember under math operations, there was a fraction, A over B. And it's, the cursor is already in the top, so I'll start typing. five. Greek symbol mu and g. I'm going to use the cursor, the arrow keys. I'm going to go uh, back to the left and then down one. And that didn't work out very well. I'm going to use the mouse to click in that spot. There we go. So now I'm on the denominator of the fraction. I'll type in 7. And again, I know I've got t squared, so I've got to set this up in my text boxes. So I'm going to go to math relations and I'm going to do x to the b. Not as easy as a word processor, but you kind of get the hang of it after doing this for a while. So there's t. I'm going to press the right arrow key. I'm going to go up automatically. And that's my equation. I'm all set. If I want to change anything about it, I can change the color, change the size. Sometimes when you're typing in, you don't want to put the equation in the middle of a line of text because it makes everything kind of screwy. So you just put it on its own line. You have some text above it. So you, up here, you might have some text. And then just put the equation on its own line, and then you'll continue the text later on. Ooh, that got kind of big. But you'll continue the text uh, later on.
So that's what it might look like in, in your text. The equation may not be this big, but I made it big like this because if I keep it the normal size, let's see what it looks like when it's uh, 11 point font. At 11 point font, it can be kind of hard to read. Now I've got the screen magnified at this point, so it's a little bit easier, but still, you want to make it big enough so you can read everything that's there. Now let's look at some of the word processing uh, features. So I'm going to go down here, the word processor, and I'll set my size and color. So I'll make it, uh, I'll make this one blue, and the size, I'll leave it at 24, just to make it nice and easy. Now the one half, kind of an easy trick. Type one slash two, one slash two, and a space, and Google interprets. And then I'll go to the left with the arrow keys and type MV, and then superscript, I'll go to format and superscript. And then I'll use the, let's see, I'll use superscript again, turn it off, a space equals space, another one half, one slash two space, then I'll use the left arrow key to go back, I'll type M, I think it hit a little bit, parentheses, V, I want a subscript, so format, subscript, I'm going to use a letter, little letter O there to make it look like a zero, and then format, and turn off the subscript, and then parentheses, and I need a superscript, so I'll turn on superscript, and then a two, and then I'll turn off superscript, superscript off, space plus, space MGH. A little bit easier, and I can change this too. Uh, I can highlight all this and change the color, the size, even the font, which I couldn't adjust the font in the equation editor, but I can here. So it gives me a little more control, but it has some limitations. Fractions are, are really difficult to work with, but everything else works just fine.